I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, gasket off of here and very carefully put it back in here. I would almost be surprised if that gasket does not leak. That's the thing about paper. I'm gonna check into it. Something else I'm seeing, cause I know I did not pry right there with my tool, there is a dent right there in the uh, face surface. And everything else looks pretty fair. There is a indicator pin and an indicator pin. There's two of them that goes with this case. The next thing I'm gonna remove is we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, fuel pump out, which is right here, that's your fuel pump. Uh, one thing you wanna be careful of, it's, it's the uh, nipple on that thing for your uh, fuel line is plastic. So I'm not gonna mess with that too much. I don't wanna damage that thing. So we got most of the oil sopped up out of there. So now we can go ahead and take that off. It's 10 millimeter. Well, that was, I, that was loose. And all that, what that does is it's riding on the, uh, there's a lobe down here for your pump. It kind of rides like a camshaft. All right, now, one thing you want to watch for, and you'll see it on the others, there are multiple gaskets right here. And that is for your timing. Okay. All right. You can see the different gaskets right there. This one's got two on it. And they're actually two different thicknesses. Uh, later, whenever I go through this assembly, I'm going to measure those. This determines the amount of fuel flow that's allowed to be pumped, depending on where your governor, your governor uh, lever is which is right here, that activates that pin. There's a fork that activates that. Okay, let me push it. Old nasty rag sopped up right there. All right. It's nice to have plenty of these towels around when you're working on stuff. So what the next component we're pulling out is, that's a uh, 10 millimeter. Sorry, the, yep, should be a 10. And what I did is I just loosened it off and pulling the governor arm out. There uh, is, Where's my pin? There's an O-ring right here. And you have a little thin flat washer right there. After you've loosened off that screw, I think this arm's gonna pull completely out and nice. There is a flat for that screw to seat into. What I like to do on these things, and there is not any type of a uh, backing washer on the inside, a wear washer. It was just on the outside of the engine. So what I like to do on a case like this is I will go ahead and reassemble this. And then I make a note on my sheet about the, that wear washer being to the outside of the engine. Be careful, when you remove this, it's got your, this is your camshaft. You have your lobes right here where you have your lifters were sliding down. So, camshaft looks pretty good. Okay, I'm getting ready to pull the lifters out. Um, before I pull them out, there I'll show you in just a second. Before I pull those lifters out, I'm gonna go ahead and make two bags. One of them's gonna be for intake and one's gonna be for the exhaust side. Okay, well, we're down to the crankshaft. That's all we have left. Uh, 
you'll need to orient your crankshaft to where you can get to the bolts. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and uh, finish removing the two halves of this. Again, I'm going to alternate from one side to the other. One click at a time, and well, maybe two click. Yeah, not nope, one. There we go. Now we're starting. To, I've already gotten one side loosened off barely. Come on. Such a tight fit right here. Pull that back out. Put my 10 millimeter on to do the other side. I said one side. One side I have to use my little adapter to make it the right length. Then the other side, I just wind up using the socket. Good thing is I am able to get to them. Okay. Both of the rod bolts are out. They're both, I mean, yeah, the rod bolts are out. They're both the same length. Take the bottom half of the cap off. The wear surface in there looks pretty good. Once you get the uh, rods off, or the uh, bottom cap off of the rod, what you want to do, I usually just rotate it around and it usually comes free of the crank. You see that? The rod is now free from the crank right here and your piston is at the top. So you can just take that rod and push it I mean, a lot of times it'll just push right up through the top. Now, one thing you'll notice, if, if you've ever heard of a ridge reamer, sometimes you'll have to use a ridge reamer up at the top if there's a lot of wear to get these rings to compress. Okay. Okay, when you pull, when you pull this piston out, make sure you have the correct orientation. You'll notice you have your valve pockets. Over here is where your push rods are. Um, the valve pockets are on the same side as where your push rods protrude through, and I made a note of that on my sheet. Now we should be able to just push this crankshaft out, and I am looking for, one thing you always wanna do when you're looking for crankshafts, you wanna see if there's any kind of shims or anything of that nature, because a lot of times there actually are. And in this particular case, I am not seeing any shims of any kind on the bearings. So we pretty much have this thing completely disassembled. It's ready for a cleaning. I'll be taking some notes. Uh, I'll be doing a lot of measurements and we'll get to that in the next round as we start reassembling.